Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. Starting the day today in a taxi from London. Charlie and I came down on an early ish train this morning. We have both got a full day of errands and meetings and bits and bobs, and then we've got a really lovely evening planned. We're actually going to see um, Ludovico. Unaudi, I think that is how you pronounce it, a classical musician whose songs I'm sure you may recognise if you have the sound on when you're listening to my Instagram stories because I often use the wind song in a lot of my Instagram stories. So that is tonight at the Royal Albert Hall, um, but I'm currently heading down to Soho House for a couple of meetings and to get a little bit of work done. I have just dropped Charlie off with Dr. Tom on Harley Street. Charlie has been wearing Invisalign at night for the last year or so um, so he has got the final oh, he's got the final appointment getting his little attachments taken off and maybe some composite bonding so I might have a boyfriend with a whole new smile by the time I next see him it is the most glorious day very chilly as you might be able to guess from my many many layers um, but it is the most glorious day we had a PT session at the house this morning with Simon um, so I'm gonna have a nice big hearty breakfast as soon as I get to Soho House. Then I'm gonna do a little bit of shopping and then um, a few more meetings before the concert later tonight. first shopping destination of the day. I can't resist a little look in Liberty. I always love seeing what blooms they've got out of the front here. Some preserved leaves, beautiful hydrangeas, and some lovely autumnal dahlias. to say the Liberty Beauty area is, in my opinion, the best. They have got so many amazing brands, oh my gosh, and their advent calendar. <gasps> wow. Next stop. Bye-bye. I'm here a little bit early, so I'm just catching up on a little bit of work. It is such a beautiful salon. I forgot how gorgeous it is here. It's definitely one of those places that I really miss now that we don't live in London. Okay, my meetings are done for the day. A little quicker than expected, which is wonderful. I now have fresh nails and a fresh bouncy blow dry thanks to dry by. Had a great meeting with Cordley. Now going to have a little look down Regent Street. Haven't been shopping at down Regent Street. Oh, sparkles, oh my gosh. In quite a while, and I'm not going to lie, I am also beelining for the Dior store on New Bond Street. Not that anything is on my shopping list, but I just love having a browse. been in this Louis Vuitton store before and it is incredible it is absolutely ginormous they've got some lovely gift gift ideas very bougie gift ideas can you imagine wow <laughs> a Louis Vuitton home gym okay these are stunning oh my gosh I love that they have got crown and royal themed Christmas lights this year it's so lovely Next stop, Dior. Let's have a little nooch around. 
love the home pieces. Look at this. Beautiful deal umbrella, my goodness. There's my gardening apron that I was wearing yesterday. <laughs> My darlings, it's now Wednesday morning. We had a little bit of a late night last night, wild party animals going to watch classical pianists that we are. Um, it was such a magical, <coughs> magical evening at the Royal Albert Hall. The last time Charlie and I went to the Royal Albert Hall was to see James Horner, who was the composer for a lot of the music in Titanic. Um, and it was just absolutely magical. Charlie has actually been to see an orchestral performance of Gladiator there as well. It is the acoustics in there. I think I managed to take a couple of video clips. They have these like um, kind of fabric domes on the ceiling which is designed to absorb and bounce back the, the noise. So for musical performances it is just absolutely incredible. Ludovico was amazing. He was a man of few words but of great <laughs> piano talent. Um, and he had a violinist, a cellist, and a percussionist performing a small section of the, the songs with him. I'm sure you guys, if you don't, if you're not really familiar with him, I'm sure you would recognise a lot of his music. Um, if I can, I will insert some clips here of the most iconic soundtracks. <laughs> have done that but there we go um, and I often use his songs in my Instagram stories because they're just lovely very relaxing so it's great to see him performing in real life um, I heard a story not about him um, but I heard a story once which I've no idea if it's true but someone told me that um, in New York there was a classical music big concert for a very famous violinist um, and it was a ginormous concert and loads of people were getting the subway to go and see this violinist. They got out of their stop where the concert hall was and there was um, a, a, a busker playing the violin in the underground tunnel on the way to the concert. Um, and most people just like walked by, didn't really pay any attention, maybe chucked them a couple of dollars and then went and sat in their seats and watched this concert that they'd paid hundreds of dollars to watch. And the, the violinist that they'd paid all this money to see said at the end of the concert, by the way, hundreds of you walked by me playing the violin <laughs> in the um, metro station and didn't give me a second glance. And I thought that was very interesting. And I don't know if that's true or not, but it's just a story that I heard once. <laughs> so maybe it's in the news somewhere and you guys can confirm or deny if it's baloney or not. Anyway, as you can tell, um, it's actually nearly 10 o'clock in the morning and I still have not got dressed or done my makeup, which is very unlike me. We didn't get home until about 1 a.m. Um, because obviously we got a taxi home after the performance. It was a three hour long performance. You'd think three hours of watching someone play the piano would be boring. <laughs> actually, it was, it was amazing. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit tired, a little bit tired. Um, but I've got a new beauty device that I want to try out this morning, so I feel like today's the perfect day. You guys um, would have heard me talking about Current Body many, many a time before because they are my go-to website when it comes to my LED devices in particular. Um, my, my jelly, my silicone face mask that I use many times a week, like three or four times a week. I took it with me to Singapore, I took it with me to Paris, Charlie pinches it too. I love it. Big LED fan over here. Um, what else have I got from them? Um, my laser hair removal device is from there. Loads of bits. It's basically my go-to website for the at-home beauty devices. And they have sent me something, it's not new, but something new to me to try out. 
I've tried microcurrent technology before, but the device that I've got to try out this morning is actually nanocurrent, which is a smaller current, which therefore means hopefully that it can penetrate deeper into the skin. What they say about micro and nanocurrent technology is that it goes into the skin and mimics the skin's natural vibrational frequency um, and encourages the skin to repair itself and generate more elastin and more collagen, which is obviously great for anti-aging benefits but also uh, revitalizing the skin um, and giving you kind of like a plumped up energized complexion which quite frankly is what we all want. I'm always a little bit taken aback initially by the cost of these devices because they are in the hundreds of pounds, they are expensive. Great things to add to your Christmas list especially you know as your like main present because I appreciate that you know it is it is an expensive thing. But I always like to compare it to the cost of salon treatments and um, if you were to keep going to a salon to get these kind of treatments and they're practically the exact same thing then you would spend the amount of money that the device costs in two or three treatments and once you've got the device it's yours you can share it with your mum you can share it with your husband whatever but it's yours and you've only had to pay out once apart from when you buy more serums and stuff but anyway that's how in my head I justify the price so I've already unboxed this and set it up, but this is going to be my first time using it. This is the Zip device, um, which Kim Kardashian and Jennifer Aniston apparently are big fans of. And it is this nano current device here, which I've currently just finished charging via USB. Ooh, it's buzzing already. So it's this little guy here, really teeny tiny, so fantastic for traveling. These are the two nodules that will emit nano or micro current. I think it's got a third kind of current that it does as well and then what you want to do is download the app which I have done it's a very sleek and stylish app and this has got loads of different um, facial like routines that you can do so if like me you get it and you're like what do I do with this then oh it's got brow lift it's got a plumping setting you can do your jowls you can brighten and awaken your eyes it's got two minute versions it's got 15 or oh, 14 minute versions um, I quite like the sound of the energizing one. So current body often are very very generous and extend a discount code or an offer when I talk about their lovely products so I will leave that on the screen here if you'd like to give this a try yourself. As I've said this is my first impression, this is me using it for the first time. Nano current and micro current technology is known to be incredibly beneficial, people are seeing amazing long term results and it has got so many 5 star reviews on their website. Speaking from experience, something that I have actually got something from the current body LED range here. Something that I absolutely adore, as you know, is the LED technology. And I'm also gonna give this a try today. This is new to the LED range. You might have seen me unbox this. It's basically like a giant adult dummy, which is hilarious, but it's designed um, to give you the LED benefits around the mouth area. So say um, you spent your teenage years pouting or smoking um, and you have got uh, one of your concerns is fine lines around the lips around the mouth this is going to be your most effective at home way of reducing those you're going to look hilarious when you're using it literally like an adult dummy um, but current body so kindly sent one of these over for me to try being at the biggest led technology fan that i am um led was a technology that was discovered I think first by NASA because they found out that it was incredibly beneficial at um, healing those that were in space helping to heal the bodies quicker um, and how LED works is the red light technology makes tricks the skin into thinking that it's damaged even though it's not so it goes into a repair mode um, and therefore your skin it does what it's meant to do but kind of like on a supersonic scale so whether that's um, repairing itself from damage, like sun damage, pollution damage, aging damage, um, which is a lot of sun and pollution damage. And it is very, very effective and well proven technology. So huge LED fan over here, still getting to know microcurrent and nanocurrent technology. Um, but let's give it a whirl, less chit chat, more action. I'm gonna, should I tie my hair back? Yes, I'm gonna tie my hair back. Um, I feel like my hair just doesn't wanna curl at the moment. I did heated rollers um, at home yesterday before going into town and then by the time it was lunchtime all the curls had gone so the ladies at dry-by added some more curls using a tong 
and like pin them up on my head um and it looked amazing <laughs> and again by the time we got home it was just completely gone right so in your starter kit with the zip device you'll get the golden gel and you want to pop a pump of this in each zone of your face so i'm going to do one two three pumps Ooh. and i've already done my clay de peau le serum and i have also put on a what should we call it vitamin c capsule because i do that every morning pretty much as soon as i wake up so you don't want to be rubbing this serum into the skin you just want it on the face start treatment oh my gosh it's sending the treatment to my device so go ahead and put your zip right here and slowly glide up the back of the neck and hold until you feel a vibration <gasps> oh okay we're gonna do that again all the strokes on the neck we do twice oh my gosh you can literally feel it like pulsating your muscles oh that's insane number two oh that's so now funny i'm gonna move in just a bit slowly and holding right here i'm just gonna move your mouth like a mine is oh <gasps> that's not me doing that <laughs> one more time my 12 minute energize treatment very relaxing the lady that's taking the videos has got a very very calming voice that is so clever the fact that just before i started the treatment i synced via bluetooth connected straight away my device with the treatment so when she's saying it's gonna buzz it buzzes and obviously the intensity is changing as we're going around various parts of the face I don't need to worry about clicking any buttons, there's only one button on here, just the on off button. Um, so it just kind of gave me the confidence <laughs> that I was doing it right. If you've ever been to face gym or had a uh, micro or nano treatment before, you'll know that it's such a weird feeling. Because they are activating the muscles in your face, you sometimes lose control of the muscles yourself. So I tried to show you when my lip was going um, and you just have no control. Sometimes your entire like eye will start to have a little a little shaky moment and that's just you kind of feeling that it's working. So, so clever. And because it was quite slow movements, I was also <laughs> reading some blog posts about the device um, while I was doing the treatment. So the reviews are amazing. This lady's saying it's, she's been using it for four years. She can visibly see, see improvements to her complexion, sculpting, active acne and pigmentation from past acne has all been visibly improved from using the zip. Nano current is a small electrical current that communicates with your skin cells to trigger them to create more collagen and elastin, helps speed up the skin's natural healing and repair progress process, which is why it's good for treating acne and pigmentation too. Oh, so the lady in the videos is the founder of Zip, Melanie. Oh my gosh, okay, that's amazing. She has got such a calming voice. So my darlings, I feel like I should just sit here and give this a try now, which I already know I'm going to love and be obsessed with, although I haven't charged it. Oh, already comes with some charge. Fabulous. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to talk to you <laughs> while I've got this in. Normally, it has... My face mask has a 10-minute... Um, what do you call it? A 10-minute program. I don't know how long this is going to last, but um, here we go. Okay, my darlings, I have done my morning pampering. I've got myself dressed. I 
thought I would do a little try on of some of the bits that I picked up in and other stories yesterday. So first of all, this gorgeous little jumper dress. I actually saw that they have got back in stock a lot of the jumper dresses that I fell in love with last year. Um, there is a really nice kind of midi length cream one with a little delicate gold belt and I lived in that last year. Hopefully I'll be able to find it in my wardrobe somewhere. But yes, definitely recommend that one. I'll leave it linked down below alongside these ones. I'll put 2021 <laughs> jumper dress next to it in the description box. But this one is a little bit more plain and simple, just a no detail really white knitted jumper dress. Really nice, chunky, uh, like a big roll back on the sleeves, which is really, really lovely. And then you've got this super cozy, chunky neck detail. It doesn't come with any kind of belts, but you could add a nice little brown or black leather belt if you so desire. Um, yeah, so this was the first thing that I got. I can never ever be bothered to try stuff on in shops anymore. I haven't done since before COVID and even way before that, I just, I can't bother to get undressed <laughs> basically. Um, so I always just try things on at home and hope for the best, but I feel like you can't really go wrong with jumper dresses. I got another jumper, which I'm probably gonna end up wearing for the rest of the day, so I'll try that on in a second. But then I also got a couple of pairs of socks. How exciting. I thought they were quite cute with a little gold gold detail on those. Um, and then I love a nice, is it cashmere or wool? 100% cashmere, and cashmere does actually keep you warmer than wool. I find that these headbands are so impactful at keeping your head and your ears warm. It's really great to just have one in your pocket if you're not sure if you're gonna get chilly ears on a dog walk or on a day out, even like a day shopping, if it's a chilly day, this will stop you from getting that cold migraine, which I don't know about you, but I'm very prone to if my head gets cold. Right, I'm gonna flip on the jumper. So this here is the jumper that I picked up from And Other Stories. There are many things <laughs> that I love about this jumper. First of all, I really, really love the cream and brown combination. I think they're a very, it's a very autumnal color combination. I love the detail that you've got this chunky section down at the bottom of the sleeves. They're a really good length on me. Um, I actually quite like the fact that it's not high neck. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes my skin can get a bit sensitive on my neck. Um, um, and I just don't want any fabric there, especially if it's like all day at the house. Our house can get quite warm and I feel like if you're warm in a cashmere or wool roll neck, it can get a little bit itchy. So it's nice to have an aerated <laughs> neck in this design. Um, I love again that it's not too thick because once again, being in the house, I wonder what the material combination is. The dream jumper is one which is not too thick, but it's still wool or cashmere. I bet this one won't be because I don't think it was that expensive. Oh, it's actually got some alpaca and wool. 33% wool, 32% alpaca, 32% wool. Okay, that's very good, very, very good. If you want to keep warm during autumn and winter, always check the fabric composition because wool and cashmere are gonna keep you so much warmer, but not just warmer, but they're gonna keep you temperature regulated. You will know the feeling if you've ever sat in front of a fire or been out for a dog walk or something in a polyester jumper, you will know that firstly, it doesn't keep you warm to begin with, but then when your body starts to get warm, you just sweat <laughs> because it's not breathable. Um, so it's worth saving up and getting a wool or cashmere jumper instead of um, buying like five more affordable polyester jumpers. In my humble opinion, check charity shops. If it's not within your budget, check charity shops, check secondhand places, check Reliked, that's a really good website. And you should be able to find some wool or cashmere in your price budget. But I do think that And Other Stories does very good value good quality knits at a good price. And the other thing <laughs> that I love about it is the length. Sometimes I just want my tummy covered and for reasons of preferring the lower parts of my legs to the other parts of my legs, I like the upper part of my legs to be covered by my jumper. I find it a lot more flattering. So this is a really, really good length. So all around, I think we have got a wonderful new knit to wear. And then I've just popped on the new little slippers from Nice Cream London, which are rather lovely. I do like day two after having my hair curled where it's just almost like a, a 
blow dry kind of flick um, which is great because I can't bother to wash my hair today. I am thinking by the way guys, I know you've been saying it all along that I might swap this antique effect mirror for a clear one just to make showing the outfit of the day a lot easier and less speckledy or are you guys used to it now? Let me know what you think I should do because I might look into it. Um, I've been very inspired by Amelia Liana's dressing room. It looks so beautiful and I'm not gonna lie I'm very jealous of her outfit of the day setup. Anyway, I'm hungry. Need to make myself a nice coffee so um, I'll catch up with you shortly. This is my current office setup. I've got one very needy puppy on my lap and one very handsome puppy keeping security watch. Are you keeping lookout, my eldest? Have you ever seen such a handsome security detail? You're lovely. And you are the scruffiest and neediest boy that I've ever met in my life. I adore you. Absolutely adore you. Charlie's dressing room currently looks like something out of a Dexter episode. Do you remember? Is it Dexter or The Mentalist? No, it's Dexter. And actually, Dexter. I'm pretty sure they brought that back and we never finished Dexter. Oh my gosh. It's one of those American series where it just goes on a bit too long. But, glad we watched it because yeah. we named our first child after it. Very similar. <laughs> both <laughs> both absolute madmen. It was inspiration. It no, was. this is exciting. So, First and foremost, we are not people that just flip and change and decide to change the paint colour on a whim. However, it made me feel quite happy that it was actually two years ago, just over two years ago, because Andrew, our lovely painter decorator, has some um, photos he sent me that I wanted to see, just over two years ago that he painted this. And I liked the colour, but I was never like in love with it. Where are we, darling? Because people never see Sorry, this room. Sorry, so we're in my dressing room. Mm -hmm. which is, is off the um, bathroom to our bedroom. And to be honest, I take this room for granted because I'm so lucky that I've got this space. Mm -hmm. But you just, human nature, you take it for granted. But I think also because I've never been 100% happy with it in here, I'm not keen on showing it that much. Mm. So I'm hoping that this refresh, and obviously our tastes have also evolved and changed a lot in the two years since we painted this. Mm. A dark blue, even a bit like the snug room that we're not redecorating, but that colour I'm not sure we're as attached to as we mm. as we are with the colours now. Mm. So anyway, long story short, as it happens, Lick contacted us about a paid partnership, and we've used Lick paint in Straw Top, I'm trying to think which room, um, before, and it's their new Soho Home collection. And when we went on the website, there's a few rooms in the house that we're sort of planning on refreshing, but we, we kind of wanted the colours that in this collection to dictate which room we wanted to do. Mm. And lo and behold, they have an amazing green colour, which I thought would be mm -hmm. fab for this room. Yeah. This is... Is it called Rome? So the green colour that we're using, so basically all the colours, and I think there is, let's count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe there's eight colours, mm. and they're all inspired by different Soho houses around the world. Clever. Okay, so... Obviously, it arrives like this. This is the samples. So instead of having all the silly little paint samples, which are <laughs> a pain, because they're not good, are they? Because A, from a sustainability point of view, you've got loads of tins that you're left with, mm. with little bits of paint in that you actually can't recycle. <gasps> and B, often people don't just have to keep all these samples. These are sticky back. Clever. Um, and you literally stick them on. Oh, that is lovely. This is the colour I've gone for. And it's a matte colour. Now... Oh my gosh, it's going to look so good. It's called Green 05. Rome and House. And it's inspired by the Sir House in Rome. Lovely. 
I ordered all the samples. They have done so well to yes. get that partnership. Like, what an epic partnership. It's, it's, no, but it's, it's, we love this, don't we? It's like two brands we, we like and love when they come together. And it creates something very powerful, doesn't it? Powerful. Um, <gasps> Ooh. That Are is you the sure National you... House where we go. No way! Yeah. Oh my gosh! It's now, gonna be pink. I'm not gonna lie. I love it. I'm not gonna lie. One day, I think <laughs> you should paint your dressing room like that. <gasps> pink. A oh pink walk in wardrobe. Gosh. I was just saying earlier how much I love Amelia's. Imagine if I painted it pink and then had like green Does she curtains. have it so it's pink? Um, no, I think it's neutral, but then she's got pink fabric inside some of the panels, which she you can see. She followed her home, her home account, and I do love, obviously her house is different because it's a London house, mm. but the, her attention to detail is lovely. Yeah. This is the D Street one. I'll be honest, it's not, I'm not, it's Ooh, a nice colour, like but it's, it. not, it's not right for this house. I can't believe they have Nashville. They've got Amsterdam, which is number eight, grey, zero eight, which I think could be really cool for a dressing room, actually. I feel like for people that live in London, who are we talking to the other day about how like this blue-grey windows are so on trend. Ben and Robin. Yeah. Um, I quite like this as well. I mean, this wouldn't work in here. The other colour... What did that say Soho Warehouse? So this is Soho Warehouse, Where's which I that? don't know where that is, so mm. I have to do some research. Soho Farmhouse Ooh. Beige is a really nice colour. That is lovely. What room could we do that in? I don't know. Do you I know feel what? like Straw Top Cottage. Yeah, but I also feel like if we do repaint the snug room, and for mm. those of you that don't know, another room that we don't feature very often on on our home account is the snug room, which essentially is a spare bedroom on the top floor that we just didn't, it didn't make sense to make it a bedroom. Oh, I like that what? next one. What colour is that? This is Dumbo House, where we've also been. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, this, this, I mean, this is another lovely colour, right? Super powerful colour. They're all gorgeous. Um, Soho Rock House we've not been. I mean, I, yeah. I oh, we have, but it wasn't a Soho House. Wasn't, no, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was called Scorpio's. But anyway, so that's, so when we looked at the colours and when Lick approached us and said, we'd love to work with you and promote this collaboration, mm -hmm. um, we looked at the colours and we were like, what room would this work for that we kind of aren't 100% happy with? And it was this room. So I'm super excited. It's going um, to look epic. I think it's epic. going to look fantastic. We've obviously got the original panelling in here, which Andrew has been sounding back. Um, this is the original panelling. And... This actually had been really badly painted, I think, pre-Steven even. Steven even? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think by, like, way back, because when he first did it, it was a lot of work to get yeah. the paint out. Mm -hmm. But the beauty is, because Andrew's already painted this two, year, two and a bit years ago, the prep work's kind of done. Mm -hmm. So it's just a case of sanding it and, br and bringing... So he's not going to obviously have to prime this or anything. He reckons this paint can just go straight on here and it'll be perfect. So we're going to do some testers. It's worth mentioning that this green comes in a eggshell as well okay and i'm thinking of asking them to send one can of eggshell because this week's mostly prep and then next week will be the painting mm. um and just to try it out i think the mat will look fantastic here but i am intrigued to know and i think this all needs to be the same color but when it comes to the wall which we've got a lime plaster wall i wonder if eggshell might be better yeah just have a look down here look i think eggshell could be better for the wall I think maybe it might oh, be a bit intense yeah. in that, yes. but I don't know, so we're going to have a bit of a try. Mm, and then I, I think... love all these accessories that you get. Yeah, so it obviously arrives like this, which is nice. This is the pro range. I have, mm -hmm. to, I have to find out what pro means because I don't know what the difference is. Professional. Obviously, we're using a painter decorator purely because That's we're not... clever. We're not confident, are we, painting no. wooden panelling? No. I think in other rooms, we'd be quite happy to give it a go. This is so good. So it says here that Lick is a certified B Corp. This is recycled plastic core, recycled polyester, and biodegradable packaging. Wow. That's really impressive. I love that. Look at that. That's awesome. Ooh. Look at the quality of that. Yeah. So if you are going to do it yourself, you've got all the gear. And I think these... Because that's another thing that, that you, people end up having to hoard, mm. biodegradable and compostable. Because the thing is, I Never. know you can oh my get gosh. reusable ones. I um, used these as seed trays last year because we had some extra. The, th the thing is, they're great because you can get reusable ones, mm. but I mean, you use them once or twice and then they're all clacky with paint, aren't they? Clacky, that's a um, great word. So, yes. So, yeah, I'm excited. Very mm. excited. And, um... Yeah, thank you to Lick and Soho House for working with us on this because I think it's going to be, it's going to give me like new passion for this room. Mm -hmm. And as part of the glow up, I'm also thinking about a few other things. So I've got a couple of pieces of artwork. Mm -hmm. I think, I think I need a piece of artwork either here, here or on both panels. And I definitely want 
something, some sort of artwork on this wall. Yeah. Um, would a, would a mirror there be useful, or have you got enough mirrors? The thing is, I have got. Look, I think if I was if I was a vlogger like you, mate, if I was a YouTuber. <laughs> Uh, you are a YouTuber. Do you know what's really nice one. now? People don't say, oh, Josie, we enjoy your videos. They say Josie and Charlie. Like, But you're the star of the show. No, I think you are. I am very much the sidekick. No, it was really sweet, actually. Victoria posted her um, video from France last night, and I was reading the comments, and everyone was like, oh, Charlie so, came across so nice in this oh, video. Oh, wow, positive yeah. comments. Thank yeah, you. People love you, I don't you, read comments darling. enough, because I, the odd, obviously I get the odd bit of... Uh, He's an old stick. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you're, you're a bit of a honest. marmite, aren't you? I am, but I'm honest, and, and you know, I yeah. always be honest and say what I think. You always get what you say on the tin with Charlie. I'd like to think that you do. I'm like Ron Sill. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, I think Case if this point. was your room, a mirror there would make sense because it would be the perfect vlogging mirror, wouldn't it? Mm. Um, yeah, see, look, is that extra? On. No, that is the matte one. All oh, right, I so, do, I do like that. I do I as well. I wonder maybe you should get matte. Just the whole way and just mm. see. Yeah. Um, little tips for you, by the way. Mm -hmm. If you have security cam uh, alarm sensors, mm -hmm. you can very much paint them. I'm quite proud of that because mm -hmm. it blends in and they're quite ugly. Yep. Um, Are you going to get a window seat and curtains in here? I have got a window seat already. It's like a gold, um, it's a zoffany fabric. It, I don't, oh God, that's a good point. What? I don't think it's going to work with the... Gold? Gold and green, yeah. Yeah, it That looks work. so nice. It should work. Here is... Um, yeah, obviously I've got the antique bronze rail here. This is my gilet section. <laughs> but anyway, we'll do a full wardrobe tour yeah. when it's done. Because this is also giving me a bit of a kick up the backside to do a real sort through of all my shoes. Because there are shoes <laughs> I've been clinging on to since we moved from London yeah. that I just never wear because they're not practical out mm -hmm. here anymore. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to donate some stuff to charity. Maybe yeah. we can let people know where. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to... Um, have a bit, of, yeah. Have a bit of a, a rethink around some of my some of my clothes, and cool. then I think maybe I do need a new runner in here because the one that I had before, we can probably use in one of the bathrooms, and the one I had it before is 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 gold, but it's a it's a taupey colour. I don't know. It might work with the green. <laughs> Interesting. But I'm excited because before I'm super fortunate to have this room, but before just because I wasn't quite happy with it. I wasn't massively keen on featuring it, mm. which is a shame. Yeah, um, it is because it's a great it is, space. And, and yeah, I, I, as I say, I'm not going to be taking it for granted. I, we're both trying to really, it's hard in life because things become like human nature becomes sort of routine and you start taking things for granted and we just don't realize how lucky we are with this mm. house. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, maybe it'll inspire you because I think your dressing room is lovely, but it's a lot of white. I do think maybe this could inspire you to be like, oh, maybe I'll put a bit of colour in here. <gasps> what do you think? Or are you thinking I'm chatting nonsense? Well, you do yeah. most of the time, don't I? Oh, cheers, mate. <laughs> um, right. So, yeah, there you I'm go. hungry, so uh, cool. let's... Oh, should, uh, should we just quickly... Remind me. Oh, no, no. Well, you yeah, have to wait for the next video for what's in there. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. It's your mic. Good morning, my darlings. It's very... Soggy morning. It's stopped raining, thankfully, but a very soggy morning still. Like chocolate cosmos. I do. They're lovely, and actually, they're a lot bushier than um, and they're, they're normal cosmos. Are they? So yeah. So most cosmos are annual. Wow. But these will come back. Beautiful. I think, if anything, the challenge we're going to have next year is mm -hmm. containing things. Yes, I noticed the geranium is going mad. Yeah, but that's the job. When in you know when everything dies back down, yeah. you're gonna have to start separating things. Mm -hmm. So I can't remember if it was in this vlog, um, probably the vlog before, where I got the liquid amber tree from Dalesford, and it has just been delivered. And wow, yeah, it's mega. It's huge. Yeah. So I think fantastic. What, so what, I'm, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in this pot, mm -hmm. and it should be fine in the pot. I mean, it's arrived in the pot, and they said it should be fine. Um, I think this needs to almost come back to where this is because I think I think it needs to be central to that window, doesn't it? To which window? I think we need to have a bit of a play around because or the dining room window because we don't want to block light too much light into that window. You almost at that guest room. Mm. I wouldn't worry too much about blocking light in this one because it's quite a dark window anyway. I think it's well, more a case that's of the thing. Like that. They're both like that room gets the most beautiful I mean, light. It's going to lose all its leaves soon anyway, so we're not you know. It's, <laughs> It's not going to be the most, uh, it's, you know, it's not going to create too much time, it's going to think. No. What do you think? Well, I, it's tricky because I almost think it should be in front of the dining room because as it grows taller, 
it'll only really be the trunk in front of the dining room anyway. But then it's really beautiful to look out from the kit from the bedroom window. Yeah, it's just having a play because it's it's easily movable. Move, move. This is period properties for you. Why We're is just, that not draining? Because if I put my hand down there now, there'll be a build up of silt, mud, and leaves. Ew. So do we need a, the drains? No, no, no. That's something I can do myself, but I'm not going to do it now. Obviously, if I put yeah. my hand down there, it will, it will bring all this. Rather up. you than me, mate. Do you think so, the reason this tree was so affordable is because it's tall and? and you know it should be circular i really don't know i just asked the chap i think we are gonna have to it's fairly sturdy but i do think it's worth getting a small support mm -hmm. so when we replant this we'll have like a bit of wood here with a bit of rubber around this bit maybe right um I, yeah i really don't know i mean for that price imagine if you got a few for like a wedding or like it, it's impactful isn't it mm. the thing the thing is it is it, it, you know it is quite a tall tree yeah. I just love how it looks. I've always felt like this. Look, this hydrangea will rehome somewhere. Mm -hmm. Hydrangeas are not great for pots. We're constantly watering this in the summer. It becomes a real um, hassle. So I think it'll be nicer having something in that pot that creates colour against the wall of the chapel. Yeah. Gives a bit more to that bedroom without blocking the window. And isn't something we have to be constantly watering. Because like all these pots here, something we're learning. Like we're putting things in pots now, like this for Vernon but are fairly low maintenance. Yeah. It, it, you know, they don't need a lot of water in the summer mm -hmm. um, because you just don't have the time to be constantly well, watering things. It's nice to have a bit of autumn colour in this area. I think. Wonderful. Are you happy with it? Yeah, it's lovely. Boom. Wonderful. Hey, my darlings, it's one of those days where I just want a nice, warming, hearty lunch. And this morning, while I was doing my makeup, I was watching Leonora's um, wellness video and she made a lovely miso soup. And I remembered that I have got some miso paste uh, that I got from Ocado a couple of months ago. Needs using up. And I have actually never cooked a miso before, I don't believe. And aside from carrots, I believe, I have everything that I need to make the soup. So I've just grabbed some vegetables from the fridge. We've got some leeks, some spring onion, some cavolo nero, got some spuds, onion, garlic, and ginger. So I'm going to follow a mixture of Leonora's recipe and also one that I found online. It should be a really nice, warming, slightly Asian style soup. So I've got tamari, we've got the tamarind paste, some soy sauce, some rice wine, some Worcestershire sauce um, and lots of veggies. So I'm going to get chopping and get making. video while I'm chopping my veg and so far we've got a giant white onion frying away I've added some garlic some ginger and some leek just with some olive oil boiling a kettle now I'm gonna boil the kettle fill this with water add my potatoes which I'm going to chop Leonora was saying she uses a lot of pak choy bok choy um, which I don't have in the fridge but I have a feeling I might have some in the garden so Let's go and have a little look if there's anything in the garden we can add it to our soup. Come on then bunnies, come on Dickie, come on. Let's go and see. Of course I can add, oh yes, fabulous. We've got plenty down here. Okay, I can definitely add some rainbow chard. Uh, hmm. I'm going to just stick in these ridiculously huge radishes. Have you ever seen a radish that big? That is totally ridiculous. Oh, of course I've got carrots. Of course I've got carrots. I forgot about these little guys. Right, you're coming with me, my little stumpy friends. Could probably stick pumpkin in there too. Lots of root veg, that's wonderful. And you, you're coming with me. Ooh, look at this. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And some pak choy. Oh, this is wonderful. My kitchen garden never lets me down. Well, look at this. I can barely get it all in the frame, but a handful of very muddy and very fresh vegetables going into my soup. Perfect.
Okay, so I've just added in the flavoursome parts of the miso soup uh, to my mixture of the fried vegetables and water. So, I'm sure Leonora won't mind me sharing her recipe, which I've jotted down here after watching the video and rewinding and rewatching several times. So if you're going to make this at home, you need two tablespoons of miso paste. I've got this one from Clear Spring. I'll leave the Ocado link down below. Then we used one tablespoon, did I say teaspoon? I meant tablespoon. One tablespoon of tamarind. And she said that if you don't have tamarind, you can use dark soy sauce, which is what I used. Three drops of Tabasco. We've got this hot sriracha chili sauce, so I used that. Um, one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, which is that one there. One tablespoon of tamarind paste, which magically we did happen to have some of. And then one teaspoon, I can't even read it. Dicky! And finally, one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, which I fear I may have put a little bit too much in because it very much kind of smells a bit like a gravy, but I'm gonna do a little taste test. I actually think the flavors are too strong, so I'm adding in a little bit more water. And my pak choy leaves. Tear up some rainbow chard. Okay, so this has been boiling away for about, well, not boiling away, simmering for about half an hour. And now, as per Leonora's instructions, I'm using a pasta ladle with slats in it to get some of the veggies in each bowl. And a soup ladle for the broth. There we go, three hearty bowls of a miso vegetable soup with a mixture of leftover veggies from the fridge and veggies from the kitchen garden. It smells and looks like it's gonna cure me of all of my ailments <laughs> with the garlic and the ginger and the miso in there. It should be very, very good for me. So we're gonna dig in. I'm gonna take this over to La Luz. We're gonna enjoy our lunch together and I shall report back afterwards. Not sure if you can see me in this silhouette form, but the soup was absolutely delicious. It was kind of more savory than I was expecting. I think with all the miso and the um, Worcester sauce, it made it quite savory. I probably could have actually, that has not frothed very well. I probably could have made it a little bit more watery. Um, and I know that often you'll find tofu in miso soup. And I think that would have been a really nice addition, but I did have my potatoes, felt very hearty um, and surprisingly filling. I tried to, I've still got my onion goggles on my head. I tried to eat a lot of the vegetables. So thank you, Leonora, for that segment in your wellness video because that very much inspired that recipe. Um, and now that my tub of miso is open, I'm going to look at other miso recipes. We had three bowls at lunchtime um, and I've probably still got enough for tomorrow lunch. So that's wonderful. Made myself a coffee oat milk latte yum 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 um and i'm gonna take because i didn't remember at breakfast and i do like to take my daily essentials from world nutrition every single day i did have my berry protein powder in my morning smoothie which oops a daisy oh no where's it gone where's my omega tablet gone oh dear ah Uh, hmm, this lighting is not ideal, there we go. Uh, yes, I had my Wild Nutrition Berry Protein in my morning smoothie, which is very important after workout for muscle recovery. Oh, but this, as I've mentioned many a times before, is basically for women's all round wellness and health. You've got your omegas, I've got my multivitamin, and I think it's vitamin D or vitamin B vitamin D. Um, so really important to stay on top of your nutrients and your supplements at this time of year. I did mention, actually, the day that I'm filming this, we had just put a blog post live on the five reasons that Team Fashion Mumbler loves to take supplements at this time of year. So I'll leave that link down below if you'd like to have a little look at the blog post. And before I forget, 
so this video hopefully is going live on Sunday when this video goes live so around 5 or 6 p.m. UK time on Sunday I'm going to put live an Instagram story question box for you guys that have got your own businesses yes it is that time of year again I am going to be doing a fashion mumbler Christmas gift guide, buying gifts from my subscribers companies for the third year running. I've done it ever since every Christmas that we've lived in this house, ever since lockdown. I know that so many of you have got your own businesses, your own companies, you create products, you sell services, you do so many amazing things. Um, and I like to champion that in my Christmas gift guides. So I'm gonna do it again for the third year. So if you um, or someone that you're very close to has their own business and you think that they would make an exceptional Christmas gift, please head over to my Instagram stories um, and I will be picking maybe 15 or 20, maybe 15 of my favourites um, and showing them in my Christmas gift guide video and we'll probably do a blog post of loads more of our favourites as well. So yes, head over to my Instagram today. If you don't have Instagram, um, you could email... I'm gonna leave, not my email address, I'm gonna leave an email address in the description box down below just in case you do not have Instagram. But your business should have Instagram if you don't. Anyway, let me take my couple of miles. Um, and reminder, my 25% off discount code for Wild Nutrition is only valid until Halloween, the 31st of October, so do uh, stock up because it's a very generous discount code. And I obviously take the Daily Essentials for Women, but there is a men's version as well. And also, I know I spoke about them loads in a video a couple of videos ago, but don't forget, you can give them a ring. You can have a free 15 minute chat with them and um, they will recommend the best supplements for you. And they're amazing and I love them. So don't forget to top up before 31st of October. Uh, so now it's actually really gloriously warm and sunny now after a really miserable start to the day. So I think what I might do is just head out in the car with my secateurs and make a big branchy floral, branchy foliagey foraged, um, you know, my big displays for the entrance hall because we've got Charlie's family coming over tomorrow. So it'd be nice to have some fresh foliage in the house. And then tonight, Charlie and I and our friends Rory and Nathan, we are heading to a supper club at Dalesford, which should be a really nice evening. I'm not sure if it's indoor or outdoor, but I think it's like an Indian chef that's coming in and doing a supper club. Very much looking forward to that. What time is it? Three o'clock, right. I'm gonna try and do like three till 4 p.m. doing my flower display. I need to put some washing in the tumble dryer and tidy up the kitchen and then we'll do some flower arranging or foliage arranging. Well I totally forgot that I had ordered a flowered um, always autumn <laughs> bouquet to arrive today so actually I don't need to go and do any branch foraging. This time they are really beautiful deep purple so these should last very very well and we've got some very plump and wonderful poppy seed heads so these will probably stay here for, well, months now until I decide to freshen, refresh the area. But I feel like they're a really lovely festive colour as well. They're such good quality hydrangeas. If you guys ever have any ideas for other flower displays that we can do, I'm thinking about maybe doing a wreath for Christmas. Let me know if that's something that you guys would like to see. So this does mean instead of going foraging, I've got some time to do a little bit more baking. Plus the fact that it's looking a little bit gray outside now. That sun was short lived. So I have pulled together a coffee <laughs> and another coffee because I'm going to make a carrot, nope, <laughs> a coffee and walnut cake. I ordered these walnut snapper openers um, from Amazon, but I have a feeling they may be a little bit small for my mega walnuts, but let's give it a go. Been 
cracking walnuts for seven minutes and this is the measly amount that I have to show for it. I need to do 60 grams. I've no idea what this is, but it's probably about five grams. So we're gonna be here a while. <laughs> Well, this is an interesting rendition of a coffee and walnut cake. I found out that my baking powder went out of date in 2020. I did still use it, um, <laughs> but as you can see, they've not risen very well at all. But I think once uh, stacked on top of each other and with some lovely icing on, which I'll do tomorrow, they should be still rather tasty. But for now, I'm just gonna leave them to cool and I'll do the icing and decorating in the morning. I'll excuse Charlie's clothes all over the, in the garden room, as we're now calling the gold room. Um, it's obviously because his wardrobe is getting decorated that his entire impressive shoe, shoe collection and beyond is in here. But I just wanted to show you the position currently of the new liquid amber tree and the view from this bedroom. So it's not blocking any light and it's not blocking the view but if anything, it's blocking the view from the chapel windows. Not that there is ever any reason <laughs> to fret for your privacy, but you know, guests sometimes might want that little bit of extra privacy. And when this is in full leaf, it will provide that little bit of um, extra screening. But yeah, I think it looks really lovely and it's still visible to have a little look down the drive. So we need to get it potted and that's where it's gonna live. And I did not want to get changed out of my super cozy outfit for tonight's dinner, so I've kept on. These are my wonderful green, very comfy, very high-waisted Lululemon leggings. They are just so divinely comfortable. And my Beaufort and Blake knit with a little sheep on it, which I think is adorable. And then I'm doing my best sheep impersonation in this lovely gilet, which I have re-got out of my autumn winter storage. I think it's Sandro, isn't it? You might have seen my coat collection video the other day, um, but it's really nice and cozy. And then my Brunello Cuccinelli boots. The DIY that I did on the back seems to be holding up pretty strong at the moment, so fingers crossed that they will survive the winter without the stirrups going loose again. Well, it's all looking very festive here at Dalesford. Tree is illuminated. 